To you, a filmmaker of a future generation, I have no idea how you've come to cinema, but you have. And that means that you and I are already speaking to each other from across time. I don't know what cinema is for you. Dance off, bro. Me and you. The value? How do you, I don't know, say the value of a film that's like a uh, theme park film, for example, uh, the Marvel type pictures, where, where the theaters become amusement parks. That's a different experience. And it's like, it's not even, it's a, I was saying earlier, it's not cinema, it's something else. You know, whether you go for that or not, but it is something else and they shouldn't be, we shouldn't be invaded by it. Um, and so that, that's a big issue. That's a big issue. Uh, and we need the theater owners to step up for that, you see, to allow theaters to show films that are narrative films. Every Marvel film ranked in six seconds. They're all equally shit. Grow up, you fucking virgins. On my films, I try to shoot as much in camera as possible. Uh, on Interstellar, my last film, you know, for example, we didn't use any green screens. So when we were shooting inside a spaceship, we had views outside the windows. We, we produced all that material and we shot it and achieved the effect in camera. And we enhanced it with visual effects. And visual effects technology has been wonderful for enhancing those things and, and increasing the vocabulary. But sometimes when you're asked to justify these things like not using green screen, you have to just bring it down to, well, it, it's so much more fun to do it. It's fun for the actors, it's fun for me. There's nothing more dispiriting than when you turn up to work and there's just a green screen with a couple of actors in front of it. It's really, the magic's not there. The director of Dune, Denis Villeneuve, they get on the subject of talking about Hollywood in general, the current direction of Hollywood, and Marvel is brought up. And he says, and I quote, there are too many Marvel movies that are nothing more than a cut and paste of others, end quote. Ridley Scott has joined the list of big name directors taking a pop saying that they're f***ing boring as shit, And the scripts are not any f***ing good. Within this genre, it's difficult to do something new. And usually you just see a bunch of people killing one another in outfits and blowing up cities. And, you know, like I know there's a thing called Infinity War coming out, which is like, I don't really like Infinity War. We need more war for all time. I'm less fan now because it became so much a machine and so much a propaganda also. It's really showing, you know, the power of America, uh, ruling the entire world, saving the poor people that we are. No country around the world would have the guts to call a film Captain Australia or Captain France. And only, only Americans are able to call it Captain America the rise of the superheroes, because I always like felt, you know, when you make normal, regular people heroes, I think that's a more honest way to kind of uh, entertain people. You know, everybody's like kind of really afraid right now, because everybody says like, oh my God, when the, when the superhero movie is not working anymore, the franchise movie not working anymore, what we do then? And they have probably forgotten how to make original movies. <laughs> The director, Alejandro González Iñárritu, said during the time of the promo of that film that superhero films are cultural genocide. I wonder oh. what you thought of that. Uh, look, I respect the heck out of him. Um, and I think for a man whose native tongue is Spanish, to be able to put together a phrase like cultural genocide just speaks to how bright he is. I'm you writing did. a book right now yeah. that'll be out next year that specifically is the subject matter is how propaganda functions within um, corporate uh, entertainment media. Most of the comic books were developed in the 1930s and 1940s uh, that were making these movies about uh, for, for kids. And if you look at them, really what the, the purpose of those were, were is to give a comfort to uh, the wars that were going on at the time. And essentially, I see that as being extruded now uh, to adults. So these films that are, for lack of a better word, the uh, comic book derived films that are not 
necessarily character studies and are more dealing with comforting the American public to feel as though they are a righteous, justified uh, police force in the world. That's that's essentially what the the message. Uh, you know, I mean, it's generalized, but essentially that's an underlying message of what's going on in our corporate um, propaganda. That's online one point uh, propaganda, and and it happens a lot in in our in our uh, film industry. Like most actors, my real job is saving the world. Start with plain water, add bubbles, mix in the perfect flavor. Look, a soda that's better for you and all of us. Less sugar, less bottles. If only I could make this message go viral. Whoa, whoa, you doing it, Scarlett. Yeah, you doing it. Changing the world, one sip at a time. Sorry, Coke and Pepsi. Oh yeah, she done it, Soda Stream. Well, with the first day of school right around the corner, a new incentive to get kids vaccinated in New York, the city now offering kids 12 and up limited edition Avengers comic books if they get vaccinated. Some might say they're the newest warriors in town. Take a deep breath. Yeah. Walk away with an exclusive limited edition Avengers comic book. I don't really read comics, but I watch the movie. I don't really read comics, but I watch the movie. Hey, Marvel movie fans. Stop acting like outraged religious fanatics defending their belief system. It's okay if I don't believe. Let it go. Also, I'm actually a big fan of a lot of comic art. Try to relax your mainstream asses. They're taking that shit seriously, and they're like, this is the performance of a lifetime. This ain't the performance of a lifetime. This is a fucking superhero movie. Uh, Heath, Heath Ledger know, would man, disagree. Heath Ledger would Heath, disagree. I was gonna go, I was gonna reference that. He, he kicked ass in that shit. But how many of these films have been made in the, since that Heath Ledger film? Like so at least 2008, not uh, even Batman, yeah, just the 30, whole. probably 30. Okay, so we could go to the one performance out of 30 where you're like, yeah, he really, he tore that shit think... Being in one of these movies is like being in The Godfather now. There isn't, because there is no Godfather. So to get a part in that and to get, you know, your, your paycheck in it and hopefully have your name on the poster is a good career move. The days of, of, of a great, true movie star who's a great, true actor who's, who's you know, who puts his blood and guts in the film, done. But I can't tell you the difference between a fucking Iron Man and a Spider-Man. Each, every five weeks, they're getting a new Spider-Man into this one. I have an actor friend of mine who had to go through the rigmarole of potentially being Spider-Man. I was like, they're making you audition for this shit? They're fucking making you audition to play? Like, you're either the guy or you ain't the fucking guy. They it's so ultra serious and there's testing. And it's like, get the fuck out of here. You could put you. They could take an unknown person off the street who's never acted before. Who says no experience, no fan base, no Twitter page, no Instagram, no followers, no anything. All you gotta do is put them in the movie. Spider-Man is selling the movie. The the fact that these movies are like the epicenter of, of movieism and the epicenter of like where these young actors, these 22 year old actors, like you have to be in one of those movies to sort of get to that bit. It's fucking bullshit, man. <laughs> it's fucking bullshit. <laughs> There's not nine heroes in this. It's not a, it's not gonna be a typical superhero comic book. I've been saying that for years. All the movies I grew up with as a kid, there was only, that I liked, there was only one fantastic thing in it. And if you took the fantastic, one fantastic thing out, it was a normal world. It's funny you mention this. That's the Marvel formula. They, in like, if you look at Iron Man. No, 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 no. Whoa, 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 no, no, whoa, no, no, whoa. no. I'm talking about the movies. I apologize. But Feige has always said for... Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, well, we'll have a disagreement. But like, Feige... Uh, There's eight Iron Mans. You've already created eight of them. So I remember clearly going to, to an Iron Man movie going, wow, wow. Not only is he not unique, there's two Iron Mans, but the gray Iron Man is now beaten up the guy who I thought was the best of the Iron Man. So now not only is he not unique, he's not even the toughest of the two. No. That's the Marvel formula. No, 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 no. Whoa, 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 no, 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 no. But Feige has always said, but Feige has always said, but Feige has always said. No, 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 no. But like Feige. No. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Let's talk about the key character in the MCU, Richard, and what happened to him at the end of Infinity War. Oh my God, I forgot that I was in that one until you just mentioned it. I was like...
Why is he talking to me about Marvel movies? Do you remember the name of it? Thor Warrior. You don't remember it. <laughs> Age of Ultron. I actually have no idea. <laughs> I'm not going to try and guess it, but... The Dark World. The Dark World! I did know that. Okay. Um, yeah. I imagine that that character will come back. Is Thor still going? <laughs> did you did you see uh, the last one, Avengers Infinity War? I missed that one, but I heard it was good. Um, what is your favourite MCU movie that you aren't a part of? Mm. I like Thor Ragnarok. Oh, I was about to say that. Thor Ragnarok, I yep. think, is my favorite one. I like Thor Ragnarok. Oh, I was about to say that. Thor Ragnarok, I yep. think, is my favorite one, which is also Quentin Tarantino's favorite Marvel movie. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Which well, means he watches these movies, Hike is which pretty means awesome. he might watch this movie, which means I might be in a Tarantino movie. There was an idea to bring together a group of remarkable people to see if we could become something more so when they need us, we could fight the battles. You have to get past the Avengers and Marvel shit at some point, okay? Other f***ing people make movies. Thank you, Kevin Feige. Thank you, Kevin Feige. QMCU. Francis Ford Coppola jumped into a controversy over the Marvel superhero movies Saturday, not just backing fellow director Martin Scorsese's critique of the films but denouncing them as despicable. When Martin Scorsese says that the Marvel pictures are not cinema, he's right because we expect to learn something from cinema. We expect to gain something, some enlightenment, some knowledge, some inspiration. I don't know that anyone gets anything out of seeing the same movie over and over again. Martin was kind when he said it's not cinema. He didn't say it's despicable, which I just say it is. Which it would take. The, the first Godfather cost six and a half million dollars. The second Godfather cost about 11 or 12 million dollars. Which, if you convert that for the money, is it would take a major studio. But it would never get through the process of getting an okay or what they now call a green light. No, nothing can get a green light unless it's a a movie that they can have a whole series of them and pretty much a, you know, a, a Marvel Comics, uh, you know, type of... Uh... And basically, there are not enough wires, I don't think, probably. Wires. wires. Yeah. I'm... James Cameron is hoping we'll all get tired of Avengers movies soon. I'm hoping we'll start getting Avenger fatigue here pretty soon, Cameron told IndieWire. Not that I don't love the movies, it's just, come on guys, there are other stories to tell besides hypergonadal males without families doing death-defying things for two hours and wrecking cities in the process. It's like, oi! As you already know, for weeks, Every movie news site claimed there would be a post credit scene at the end of Logan. This obviously pissed off the director James Mangold. He launched a Twitter tirade at bloggers who, now post-release, tried to spin it claiming they were misled. Mangold also had some words about the MCU in his interview with Vice. I question the wisdom of the Marvel Cinematic Universe in general. One thing everyone's concerned about is the creativity and quality of these kind of movies. And if that's the case, then it seems to me that the first order of business would be figuring it out why they're not more interesting or exciting. Spielberg said, quote, We were around when the Western died, and there will be a time when the superhero movie goes the way the Western. It doesn't mean there won't be another occasion where the Western comes back and the superhero movie someday returns. Zack Snyder, the director of Man of Steel and the upcoming Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, when addressing Steven Spielberg's recent comments regarding the impending death of superhero movies, he told the Daily Beast, I feel like he's right, but I feel like Batman and Superman are transcendent of superhero movies in a way because they're Batman and Superman. The director then tossed Marvel's recent superhero film, Ant-Man, under the bus and added, they're not just like the flavor of the week Ant-Man, not to be mean, but whatever it is. What is the next blank man? <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. Martel's distinct lack of enthusiasm for Marvel's output may have scuppered her chances. She added, the first thing I asked them was maybe if they could change the special effects because there's so many laser lights, I find them horrible. 
also the soundtrack of Marvel films is quite horrendous. Maybe we disagree on this, but it's really hard to watch a Marvel film. It's painful to the ears to watch Marvel films. Does anyone have any orange slices? Martel said that despite their attempts to recruit uh, women directors, Marvel still mistrusted them in certain aspects of production. They also told me, don't worry about the action scenes, we will take care of that. I was thinking, well, I would love to meet Scarlett Johansson, but also I would love to make the action sequences. Companies are interested in female filmmakers, but they still think action scenes are for male directors. So she is confirming everything that we've known about Marvel Studios. Everything has to look the same, everything you know has to look part of their universe, and is becoming more and more stale and uninspiring. <coughs> Oh, you poor sad Hulk, hold on. Wow, you have the greenest eyes. Oh. There seems to be a growing trend in Hollywood now where there's a lot of prominent product placement. It's a partnership between the companies and the film. Um, the companies will put their product prominently in the film and the film will receive um, budget support as a result of advertising. How do you, as a filmmaker, feel about this growing trend? Bullshit. That's how I feel. Total fucking bullshit. This is after looking at a lot of the people working in the superhero field and realizing that um, they've never formed a union, um, with the exception of three or four people. Um, they have never answered back to their employers, they have never complained about the subhuman way in which they are treated. When the artists that they profess to admire are taken out and put to the wall, people like Jack Kirby, when he had had his artwork physically stolen from the Marvel Comics offices, just before they were going to have to legally give it back to him. Yeah, you know, these things happen. Just a pure coincidence, I'm sure. Um, nobody said a word. And you start to see a bit of a gap, a credibility gap, developing between these costumed champions who always stand up for the oppressed, who always um, struggle against tyrants, who are always on the side of the underdog. Yeah, and then you've got the artists who draw them, who have never shown any courage at all. And you start to think, I'm, I'm not asking these people to defend the Earth against Galactus, <laughs> should he turn up. Um, I'm just asking them to stand up for their own wives and children. You know, uh, you start to see the American superhero as a, as a cowardice compensator. Um, as people who will not, who will put up with their governments and their bosses doing almost anything to them, as long as they can escape into a fantasy where they are the Hulk or the Silver Surfer and nobody pushes them around. Um, that is the negative side of the superhero in that it's, it becomes something which stands for its exact opposite. And uh, that's a bit of a downer, isn't it? I wish I hadn't <laughs> actually mentioned that now. But it's, it's the way that I've ended up feeling about the superhero. That's not to say that at some point in the future I might not dabble in the genre again 
if I can find some way of doing so in a way that entertains and interests me. But really, it's the, the last thing that I'm thinking about at the moment. There is such a lot of wonderful material that does not involve people with their underpants outside their trousers. <laughs> you know, there is a much wider universe out there, which I'm happy to explore. Bye. Thanks for stopping by.